murdered his girlfriend in the most brutal way possible and managed to get away with it. Years later, karma would take its revenge. Skifa's brother was right. Malignato, Skifa's boyfriend, had murdered her on 23 September 1988 in Louisville, Kentucky. This was a hard fact with an admission from Ignato himself. But the confession didn't come after an arrest was made or during a trial. It surfaced after Malignato was acquitted of the murder and made a free man. Malignato, full name Melvin Henry Ignato, was two years into his relationship with Skifa when she made it clear to Ignato that she wanted to break up with him due to his abusive behavior. After this, Ignato decided to murder Skifa with the assistance of his ex-girlfriend, Mary Ann Shaw. Ignato and Shaw decided that the murder would happen at the latter's house. The two spent weeks making plans that included digging a grave in the backyard and soundproofing the house. On 23 September 1988, Ignato took Skifa to Shaw's house. Once there, he pulled out a gun and locked her in. He stripped, blindfolded, and gagged Skifa before he raped and tortured her. Shaw was present. She took 105 photographs documenting Skifa's rape and torture by Ignato. They then tied 36-year-old Skifa to a glass coffee table before ultimately killing her with chloroform. After Skifa was reported missing and her abandoned car was found, Ignato was singled out as the lead suspect. Roy Hazelwood was an investigator for the FBI's Behavioral Sciences Unit. He was brought on to Skifa's case to help better understand the lead suspect. You don't break up with someone like Melignato said Hazelwood. Melignato breaks up with you. However, following investigations, authorities couldn't find witnesses or physical evidence that linked Melignato to Skifa's disappearance. And Skifa's body hadn't been found yet either. In 1991, Police told Melvin Ignato he could testify before a grand jury to clear his name. It was during the hearing that Ignato mentioned Mary Shaw for the first time. Under questions by investigators, Shaw admitted to assisting in the murder and led police to where the body was buried. Finally, 14 months after Skifa went missing, her body was dug up. Ignato was then charged with murder. The trial however, went horribly wrong. Shaw giggled on the witness stand and left a terrible impression, making her not credible to the jury. The defense attorney was top-notch and the sloppy police work on the case resulted in the jury's decision to acquit Ignato, allowing him to go free. The judge on the case, so embarrassed by the trial's outcome, wrote a personal apology letter to Brenda Skeefer's family. Flash forward to six months later. A carpet installer was pulling up carpet from a hallway in Melignato's home when he uncovered a floor vent. Inside the vent, there was a plastic bag filled with jewelry belonging to Schaefer along with three rolls of undeveloped film. The photos proved that Shaw's testimony was completely true. Ignato was brought to trial for perjury based on his testimony. During the trial, in case the photographs weren't clear enough evidence, Ignato confessed that he had committed the murder. But because of the double jeopardy rule, Ignato couldn't be retried. Instead, he was sentenced to eight years for one instance of perjury and nine for another. Melvin Henry Ignato was born on 26 March 1938 and died 1 September 2008 was a resident of Louisville, Kentucky, U.S., who was tried for the murder of his former girlfriend, Brenda Sue Skeefer, in 1988. The case was controversial because Ignato was acquitted of the charge and he later admitted killing Skeefer. Under the legal principle of double jeopardy, however, Ignato could not be tried a second time for the murder. He was, instead, convicted and jailed for several instances of perjury in his grand jury testimony for the case.
Ignato and Brenda Schieffer had been in a relationship for two years at the time of the murder. Ignato knew that Schieffer, who had complained that he was abusive, was planning to break off the involvement. He asked a former girlfriend, Mary Ann Shaw, to help him plan and carry out the murder. They spent several weeks making extensive preparations. Shaw testified they had scream tested her house and dug a grave in the woods behind it. On the 23rd of September, 1988, Skifa met Ignato to return some jewelry of his that she had in her possession. Instead, Ignato took Skifa to Shaw's house, where he pulled a gun on Skifa and locked her in the house. Skifa was blindfolded, gagged, and bound. Ignato forced Skifa to strip photographed her in suggestive positions, raped, sodomized and beat her before killing her with chloroform. Shaw took pictures while Ignato raped and tortured Skifa and assisted Ignato in covering up the murder. They buried her behind Shaw's house. He took Skifa's jewelry and the exposed film. After Skifa's disappearance, police quickly suspected Ignato but were unable to locate any witnesses or physical evidence linking him to Skifa's disappearance, or even to locate Skifa's body. In search for any lead that could let them move forward with the case, police invited Ignato to clear his name by testifying before a grand jury. There, he mentioned Shaw's name, bringing her into the investigation for the first time. The police interviewed Shaw who eventually confessed to helping plan the murder, and to taking pictures of Ignato as he tortured and abused Skifa. Shaw also led the investigators to the grave site, where Skifa's badly decomposed body had been buried for over a year. The autopsy showed she had been abused, but any DNA evidence, from blood and semen, had decomposed. The investigators convinced Shaw to wear a wire by promising only to charge her with tampering with evidence. In the surveillance, Shaw told Ignato that the FBI was hounding her and she was afraid the property behind her house was being sold and developed. He was on tape berating her for letting the FBI rattle her and told her he didn't care if they dug up the whole property because that place we dug is not shallow. Based on this recording, Prosecutors charged Ignato with murder in 1991. The trial was moved outside the Louisville forward slash Jefferson County area, to Kenton County where far less publicity had been generated. In one section of the recorded conversation between Ignato and Shaw, in which Ignato stated, that place we dug is not shallow. Beside that one area right by where that site is does not have any trees by it the jury decided that Ignato said safe not site as police believed. This led the jurors to conclude that the discussion involved a buried safe. Furthermore, Shaw, the prosecution's star witness, wore a tiny mini skirt to court and laughed during her testimony, undermining her credibility in the eyes of the jury. The defense argued that Shaw, not Ignato, had killed Skifa. The jury acquitted Ignato. The judge was so embarrassed by the verdict that he took the unusual step of writing a letter of apology to the Skifa family. Skifa's parents died before the trial began. According to some family and friends, their deaths were premature due to the heartbreak and stress of Skifa's murder. On the 1st of September, 2008, Ignato was found dead in his home. He was 70 years old. He was released in 2006. On the 1st of September, 2008, two years after his release and 20 years after the murder of Brenda Skifa, Mel Ignato accidentally fell in his home. He bled out and died. An autopsy determined that Ignato died from an accidental fall that lacerated his head or his arm and that he had eventually bled to death. The neighbor who found his body stated that it just looked like he had fell, and he tried to go to the kitchen, and there was a blood trail that way, and then it looked like he tried to make it to his room, before he made it to his room, that's where they found his body at. 
Ignato's neighbor also described him as a sick and elderly man, alone and struggling for help when he apparently stumbled to his death. I used to hear him all night, asking for Jesus to come get him, because he was in a lot of pain. Nato's son admits, he will probably go down as one of the most hated men in Louisville. Maybe it'll just put it to rest, that we all don't have to keep dealing with this over and over. That's what I hope. In the truest sense of karma, Ignato's son told local reports on his father's death, apparently, he fell and hit a glass coffee table and, from what I can tell, he cut his arm. Thank you for watching Fathers on the Case. Please like and subscribe. Mel